All right, so my name is Claudia Pichot. I am the Student Outreach and Wellness Coordinator at Student Health Services. And today we're gonna talk about some tools for time management. We'll begin with some tips and then how do you, a lot of, of our conversation will also be how to utilize your Google Calendar to set a schedule or build your agenda and how to use tasks and keeps, which are apps within the Google suite um, to help you stay organized and on top of your to-do list. So first, um, I do want to know, and, and there's just a few of us in the room today, so um, I do want to know what are some time wasters? So that's that's the first tip or um, tool that we have for time management is identifying what are things that maybe take up our time um, when we should be doing another task or on a deadline um, and, and things of that nature. Um, so if you want to put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself, but I'd love to hear what time wasters are, or what are the biggest time wasters for you? Yes, social media, definitely. Um, let's see, Raquel, do you have any input on um, time wasters for you? Your phone in general, yeah, definitely. So it's easy to get distracted um, and to you know pay attention to other things when you're trying to study or work. Um, and one of the biggest ones is definitely social media. So if we're spending too much time on social media, there are some things that you can do, um, whether you know, and set a goal so that you can stop um, kind of getting affected by that distraction. One of the first things you can do is remove notifications from your accounts so that you don't get that ding anytime somebody likes a picture or makes a comment or shares a post. Um, so removing notifications so that you only see them when you choose to go onto the app versus your phone dinging or you know your browser flashing saying that there's something there for you to look at. Um, the other thing that you can do is set time limits. So that could be, um, if you have an iPhone, uh, and I don't know about the Samsungs or any other of the phones out there, um, but I know for sure in the iPhone, you can set screen time limitations. And so if on a daily basis, you don't wanna spend more than an hour on a certain app, you can set that up. And then once you reach that limit, it will notify you and let you know, like, hey, you've reached your limit and you do have the option to either ignore it and keep going for however long you want in the day, or for another minute or 15 minutes. Um, but it is a great way to, to kind of remind you of um, the time you're spending there and to be more mindful of that. Um, another thing that you can do is just putting your phone away, especially out of arm's reach, right? I think I'm guilty. I have my phone right next to me and I am sometimes guilty of just grabbing it and it's like a tick. I just need to look at it and check it. Um, I'm putting the do not disturb right now since I didn't do that before we started. So I don't get those notifications. And that's another thing you can do, putting on do not disturb um, so that uh, you don't get any notifications at all. Um, and if you're prone to texting and answering personal calls while you're studying or while you're working and you want to set a goal to minimize that, um, you can, as I mentioned, set your phone on do not disturb or there's focus mode. So lots of settings that you can use, especially if you have an iPhone and I'm sure Samsung and um, Androids have the same features. They're, they're usually ahead of the game from iPhone, um, but they um, allow you to set focus time based on the time of day, based on your location, or just when you say um, to turn it on and then you can turn it off. Um, another thing to do is also letting those who do contact you on a regular basis know that um, when you're in class or say for a particular week, um, you're really wanting to study for a midterm that's coming up. And so you're dedicating your Monday to that. You can let them know in advance, like, hey, if you text me during these hours or on this day, um, my, I'm not going to respond right away because I'm going to be focusing on my studies or, or my work. And so um, if you need to reach me, just know that I will respond to you when I take a break or um, at the end of the day or when I get my lunch um, and, and I won't be looking at my phone. So um, you know, don't be scared that something has happened or anything like that. I'll respond to you when I can. 
um, and just only reach out to me if it's an emergency. But other than that, um, you know, I'll, I'll get back to you when I, when I can so that I don't break my focus. And then if you find that a lot of time has passed while you're like aimlessly browsing the web, um, a good thing to do is also try to separate your emails. So I know a lot of times, you know, I might go into my email to check um, an assignment. Um, when I was in school, I might check to see if my, my teacher emailed me, and then I would get a another email about a sale that's happening at a store that I frequently shop at. And I might get tempted to then start browsing um, the sales and online shopping instead of doing what I intended to do when I got online, which was to check my assignment. So having two separate email addresses um, can be very helpful in that case, one that's dedicated to school and even one that's dedicated just to those promos and ads, and then maybe a third that is your personal or important things. Um, you can always create uh, emails on Gmail and makes it really easy to sync them together so you can see them all at once if you want or just one at a time. And that can really help to minimize those distractions when you might be on your computer. Uh, and same with notifications, turning off any notifications that might pop up on your screen. The next tip is to plan ahead and create to-do lists. So um, unless there's pressing priorities on things, it's important to consider what sort of work you're also in the mood to do. Um, so if you're feeling creative, you may wanna prioritize doing something more along the lines of, of a writing assignment. And if you're feeling more focused and more energized, you might want to spend more time studying for an upcoming test or, um, or you know, having your meetings during those hours when you have more energy and are more focused. So um, when you're creating to-do lists, first you would wanna identify what you need to do, um, then prioritize those tasks based on when the assignment is due or on how much time it'll take to complete it. Um, you can batch similar tasks to mas maximize your time and efficiency. And then this basically gives you a plan for your day. And that list of priorities can be, you know, full schedule or just um, what you're gonna tackle in that day or that week or even that month. Uh, for that matter. And task batching is something that a lot of folks do um, to, as I mentioned, to maximize time and efficiency. And this next video will explain the power of batching. So I'll go ahead and play that. Imagine this, you wake up early, determined to tackle your to-do list and to be productive. You start off strong, but soon you find yourself getting sidetracked by emails and notifications and other distractions. And before you know it, half the day has passed and you haven't made much progress. You feel frustrated and overwhelmed, wondering where all of your time went. This is where the concept of batching might be able to help you. Batching is the idea of grouping similar tasks together and completing them all at once. It's a powerful productivity tool that can help you save time, increase focus, and reduce stress. For example, instead of checking your emails throughout the day, you can batch them together and check them all at once in the morning and then again in the afternoon. And this helps you avoid getting derailed by constant interruptions and allows you to focus on the other tasks in between. And you can apply the same principle to other things as well, like phone calls or errands or going to the toilet. By batching similar tasks together, you can increase your efficiency and get more done in less time. So that's um, one way to kind of tackle your to-do list. And then when it comes to building your to-do list, uh, we do have a... A worksheet that you can complete. Um, and this can be done on any sheet of paper, um, but it's it's called the Getting Things Done Activity. And what you basically do is first on the column on the far left, you would write everything that you need to do, every goal, every task, every um, potentially every assignment, whatever it is that is, especially if it's weighing on your mind, you can do kind of just a mind dump and just put it all on your list of everything that you need to get done. You can designate if it's for the day, if it's for um, the week, for the month, for the semester. And then the next column in the center, you would put down things that you can do without a barrier. So this is a list of all the things from the, the column on the left that you can do without needing to do something else first. So no, it has no dependencies. You can just take care of it. And that goes in the center. Um, the column on the right would then be things that you can do today. So that's things from that middle column that you'll tackle in the day. And a good tip to kind of keep in mind is if it'll take less than five minutes, you can do that first. So it's immediately crossed off your list. 
And a lot of times when we cross things off our list, it also makes us feel more productive. So even if it's something that's not on your list, maybe you add it. Um, maybe you don't have making your bed on your list, but you do that every morning. You can add that and cross it off. And if that's the only thing you crossed off, that's okay. You can always come back to it the next day. Um, so we're, we really kind of just want to emphasize that these tools are here for you. And we know that sometimes life can get a little chaotic and our plans don't always go as we believe they will. And so you can always come back to it and it's okay. So this is what that activity sheet could look like. Um, for this example, the student maybe has to complete some laundry. They need to study for their math test. Um, and I'm sorry if it looks a little blurry, but it says study for math, transfer to CSU, pay car insurance, clean bathroom, finish resume, find an entry level job in my desired field, clean out my car, buy groceries and meal prep for the week. So those are all the things that they want to do in that, in that um, time period. In the middle there, the things that they could do without a barrier would be their laundry, study for the math test, pay their insurance, clean their bathroom, finish their resume, clean out their car and buy groceries. So then the things they'll do today is um, their laundry, their car insurance payment, and then buy groceries. And then you'll see the video will kind of flip. So as you start crossing things off on the will do today, you just continue to move things from the middle column into the, the right column, and then from the left to the middle to the right. And you just kind of keep doing that until everything on your left column to do list is complete. And then you can keep adding to the list or you can create a new one. Um, but this is a nice activity to do, as I mentioned, especially if you feel like you, you're constantly bothered by the to-do list in your mind of, of everything that you need to get done. Um, it's a, a great uh, exercise to practice. So tackling those small things to start is always a great idea. Um, it's easy to get overwhelmed by large projects and big exams. And the anxiety can make you want to procrastinate. So starting with shorter, simpler to do um, items can, can make it a little bit easier to then focus on those big projects and assignments. So uh, what um, can you complete in a short time um, that has those fewest barriers or dependencies? And what needs more time uh, or has more complicated workflows that you would need to work through? So recognizing what those are and then setting your prioritization and, and um, maybe those to-do lists uh, with that in mind. Only doing one thing at a time is also important. So um, the University of London actually did a study that showed that multitasking can sometimes um, lower your IQ, um, as similar to someone who didn't sleep the night before. So if you're trying to multitask while you're studying, it's, it's almost the same as if you just got no sleep and, um, and crammed for an exam the next day. So it's always best to do one thing at a time. So study just for your exam and get a good night's rest and then you know wake up early or do what you need to do to, um, to be uh, energized and alert and awake the next day to take your exam. And, and that will make it so that you retain all the information that you're um, trying to retain so that you can really go into that exam fully prepared. So if you're trying to juggle multiple assignments and tasks, you're likely to end up being less productive as well. Um, so what you wanna ask yourself is what are the most common distractions and setting those goals for, for minimizing those distractions. Um, I know there was times where I really needed to focus on something, so I would even give my phone to my husband and say, don't give this back to me until I finish you know, cleaning out the office because it was a distraction and I really wanted to finish that task. Um, you can also um, turn off devices or applications, as I mentioned. And um, at times as well, you can change your environment. So if, you're, um, if you live with roommates and they're being really noisy and it's not allowing you to really focus on one thing or they keep coming in to interrupt you, um, maybe you can go to the library and get one of the study rooms, or you can go to a coffee shop, um, and put on your headphones, and then just kind of focus on what you need to focus on. Establishing routines is another way to help with time management. So setting routines can really help accomplish things that you need to do. Um, and then knowing, you know, when in your day you can kind of get things done more efficiently again. So is your home quietest in the early mornings? 
you may want to get in the habit of regularly using that time to be your study time. Um, the more often you do that, the less you'll really have to think about it. It just kind of becomes a, a habit and um, it, it makes it really nice to be able then to accomplish your, your tasks. Um, I know for me, for example, when I get into the routine of going to exercise in the morning, it really helps me and my day kind of go a little smoother. I get up earlier, I feel more energized. I'm able to get to work without having to sit in traffic for too long, that kind of thing. So it's it's a really great routine to kind of stick to and can help um, just your whole day go smoother. And there are uh, tools to help you with routines. I will show you towards the end how you can use the Google Keeps app um, for routines that repeat uh, on a, a daily or weekly basis. And then lastly on this slide is use breaks wisely. So um, the time between work and classes or activities, it could be a good time to co complete your tasks. And um, it's always a good idea to take breaks as well. One of um, the studies that are out there, you know, offer taking breaks and um, there's the Pomodoro technique, which works in short intervals so that you make sure that you give your, your brain a break. And um, the next slide is going to explain the Pomodoro technique very well. So I'll go ahead and play that. How to maximize your time with the Pomodoro technique. First, choose your tasks that you want to get done. Then set a timer for 25 minutes, which equals one Pomodoro. Eliminate any distractions and work uninterrupted for those 25 minutes. When your timer goes off, check off any tasks you've finished and take a five minute break. Then repeat. After four Pomodoros, you can treat yourself to a longer break between 15 and 20 minutes. And that's it. We hope this technique helps you work in smaller blocks of time so you don't feel as overwhelmed. And in looking for an example of the Pomodoro tool, I also found a whole series on YouTube of um, different hour lengths of um, Pomodoro kind of timers, which is a great feature and it's really nice. And I won't obviously play this whole thing due, due to time, but I did want to kind of show how it works. So, um, Chào con, chào em. Chào chị. May I cho con tìm xoay ngọt được không? It'll count down um, first for you, kind of maybe get you a uh, time to get settled. And then it starts counting down from 25 minutes to a nice focus music. Okay. Um, too far. If I get to the five minute break, it, it'll ding, it'll let you know you're in your five minute break, the music changes, and so then you know, okay, it's now time to take a break, maybe stand up, stretch, um, go get a snack, and then it'll go back to the 25 minute focus time. So lots of different examples of this that you can look into. Um, they're all on YouTube, they're all free. So it was, I just thought that was a really nice thing and it's a way to sort of um, have some accountability too. So you feel like somebody's there kind of uh, helping monitor that time for you so you don't have to worry about looking at the, the clock. And taking breaks is super important. So um, those breaks in between classes or activities could be to be more productive, but it's also a really great time to take a legitimate self-care break. So that could be the time that you check your social media. That could be the time that you sit quietly somewhere and just relax. Um, we're so fortunate you know, to have some great spaces around campus to be able to sit and maybe eat lunch or walk around campus. You can listen to some music, listen to a podcast, grab a friend and, and catch up, or just stand up, stretch, get a drink of water, um, grab a snack, um, and practice mindful meditation if you can. Um, meditation can really take place anywhere, and it's a really great way to give your brain a break. Um, so there's a lot of studies out there on meditation and how it can effectively reduce stress. It can even help with things like back pain, irritable bowel syndrome, and insomnia. So um, the, I will be sharing the slides to this presentation um, at the end. And if you click the link there that says meditation in depth, there's a great study that talks about that. And there's also so many different ways to meditate. I think when I 
first kind of was in the wellness realm, I thought meditation was just sitting quietly, you know, and thinking, um, not thinking about anything, but there's many different ways to meditate. It could just be, um, you know, focusing on your five senses. It could be focusing on your breath. It could be walking in nature and paying attention to what's around you. Um, so there's lots of different ways to meditate and um, Student Health Services has a lot of great resources on that on our Canvas page. And there's a lot of free apps as well that you can follow along with a guided meditation. Um, and they're all you know, in the app stores or you could just do a quick Google. YouTube has some great meditations as well. Um, more tips here. So learning to delegate. Um, so your significant other, your family members, your roommates, they won't be able to study for you, but they might be able to do some tasks around your house um, to kind of help you really focus on just your studies and freeing up some of your time so that you can take a break even um, because you are, you know, most of us are working, we're going to school, um, we have other commitments. And so um, taking breaks is super important as well. And if you live alone and really don't have um, somebody who can take care of tasks for you in your home, you can also just find systems that can you can put in place to lighten your load. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So delegating your chores, your meals, your errands. So for example, if you have housemates and you all take turns cleaning, if you have your, your chore schedule, um, maybe those things that take up a lot of time, you can skip for a day or a week and then the next week or two, you you take up, take that task on, and then that can allow you to really focus on that upcoming exam or um, an assignment that you have to work on. If you have a partner, you can ask them to take over some of the chores that you have around the home, like the laundry, the cooking, the grocery shopping. Um, if you have children, maybe they can take over the bedtime routine and give you that extra time to focus on your schoolwork. Um, it's also uh, effective if you share your calendar with your partner um, or even your roommates, just so they know when you're going to be the busiest and maybe they can take on a little bit more during that time. And then the Google Keeps app, which I'll show at the end as well, is a great way to um, keep your grocery list and share it with your partner so that then, you know, you're not having to then tell them everything that you need is kind of already there and good to go um, for when they have time to, to do the grocery shopping if that's something that you do on a regular basis. Um, again, if you have children, you can always ask another trusted parent that has a child in their class to maybe pick them up to save you some time on, on going to pick them up from school and taking them home if they're school aged. And then if you live alone, there are some really great systems you can put in place um, uh, say grocery delivery, um, you can do uh, a lot of times you can get some, um, they're not at, as expensive as you might think, um, especially if you try to get deliveries during certain hours or a wide range um, kind of, of delivery time. Um, you can meal prep for the week or make extra dinner to take for lunch and, and that'll save you on, um, on either going to get something to eat or um, making multiple meals for your day. Um, finding one pot or freezer friendly recipes also saves a lot of time when it comes to um, cooking. Using paper plates, um, if you have to, you know, I know it's not super environmentally friendly, but if you have to do it because it's gonna save you time and, and st dishes stress you, stress you out, definitely get paper plates and cut out on the dishes altogether. You can also set a uniform for yourself so you don't have to think about what you're going to wear the next day. And that could be something like every Monday you wear, um, you know, certain pants and certain shirt every Tuesday, you know, you, you do the same thing. Or it could just be every single day. I'm just going to wear, especially if you're going to classes, right? Maybe it's just I'm going to wear leggings and a sweatshirt and that's going to work for you. You're going to be comfortable in it and it um, cuts down that time that you have to think about. What am I going to wear today? Um, so doing those kinds of things can can really be helpful. And then automating delivery of things that you use regularly. So doing auto ship um, on a six week interval for your dog food, for your toilet paper, for all of those things that you buy on a regular basis can save you time. And that's just one less thing that you have to think about, one less thing that you have to do because it's automated and it just happens on its own. I know I've been kind of going a little fast, but any questions or comments, any any other 
things that um, maybe you think could help you um, with what we've talked about so far that, that you'd like to chime in about either in the chat or on mute? All right. Well, we're now going to move into how to kind of build your agenda and um, build out your time on a calendar. Um, we'll watch this uh, video. It's a little less than three minutes on um, tips for time management that Student Health Services created. And then we'll go through each one and get some examples on um, how to do this. So as the video mentioned, when you're building your agenda, you want to pick your organization style, you want to categorize and prioritize your commi commitments. Um, then when you build out your agenda, you would build out you know, the things that you can't control very far in advance or as far out as you can. And then the things you can control, you would fill in for what works for you. Um, it could be that you need to kind of do it on a day by day basis because there's a lot of different variables that you need to kind of uh, work through first. Um, or it's, you know, you might be able to do it a week in advance. Um, but it, when it comes to time management, it really is an individualized process and it needs to function for you and your life. And it's not a one size fits all. So um, that's why it's important to, um, to really kind of try different things that will work for you. Um, so picking your style, is it that you really like to have it at your fingertips and you need to have alerts and things um, to kind of remind you? Um, then you would want to use your smartphone and your um, your computer calendar. Um, but if you're more of a visual person and it would help you to write things down, um, then using a paper planner, um, a wall calendar planner, something like that would be most effective for you. When we're looking at categorizing our commitments, you first want to look at the things you can't control and then look at the things you can control um, and then those categories can be what's most relevant to you. And then you just prioritize them for what's most important um, or has highest priority and then what's lowest priority. So things that you can't control could be your work schedule is set in stone. And so you really can't change that. But sometimes it's our school schedule that might be first. Like that's the thing that we cannot change. Um, and our work schedule may be more flexible. So that's how you would change that prioritization. 
Um, you'd also have exams and projects, important holidays and events. Um, but again, this could be very individualized by the person. It could be your, your family calendar also needs to be on here and things you can't control and managing you know, your, your kids' um, school schedule or their doctor's appointments and things like that. And then categorizing things that you can control. So when you have your meals, when you have your study time, when you go to bed and wake up, um, your social events, your self-care, your chores, those are all things that you can fit into your day when you have the time. And then we have an example here of um, things you can't control. So for the student, it could be that they'll need to enter their class schedule for the semester. And once they register for classes, they would let, then log in their work schedule as far out as they can, enter any important due dates or exams from their syllabus for when they get that the first day of class, and then add in any important dates and events um, for family and friends, and then any important appointments. They can then add in um, a healthy sleep schedule. And again, everybody is uh, unique and an individual. For so, so, so for some people, they may need a solid eight hours of sleep and others may be okay with six or seven hours. And so that just depends on, on the person. So they would wanna set their bedtime and their wake time um, to fit that so that they can um, also get through uh, the next day. And then having a dedicated time for meal breaks. Um, I think especially as students, it's super important for us to be nourished and have um, food in our bellies so that we can really concentrate on our studies. And it's great that on campus, you know, if you did forget a meal, you can always go to the pantry or go to one of the resource spots and grab a snack or grab a, a meal that you can quickly warm up in the microwaves in the cafeteria. And so um, making sure you have dedicated time for that, productivity time for studying, time for yourself to relax and decompress. And then you can also, you know, schedule time if you wanted to for your social media, for your for TV shows, or for personal web browsing. And then again, the video really talked about this, so I won't go into too much detail, but setting those commitments as far out as you can that you can't control, um, filling in the gaps, as I mentioned. Um, when you start, you can be very detailed with certain habits um, so that you can build on them. And then if one method when you're starting doesn't really work out or you're finding that it's, it's difficult to keep up with, then you can always change that method. You can try a few together. So if it's if maybe you put just certain things on your phone, but you still use a paper planner for, for everything, you can mix, mix up how you use it. Uh, when we're looking at a paper planner or, or our Google Calendar, you can also use different colors to sort of visualize the different things that you have to do. And that could help as well to stay more efficient and know what what kinds of things are coming up for you, whether it's a meeting or a class or study time. And then always make it your own. As I mentioned, it's super individualized um, to be able to, to manage your time and your day. And so you want it to work for you and it's okay to tweak it if it's not working for you. All right, and I do have a video here um, this is a student who talks about productivity and how they use the Google Calendar. Um, I will pause it from time to time um, to kind of show some updates um, for, for this, and then I might skip some parts, but we'll go ahead and, and watch it. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to today's video, which is all about how I use Google Calendar for students organization and all of that. I'm going to teach you how to be more efficient, organized, and just better with using Google Calendar and a bunch of different tips. I really love Google Calendar. It's like one of my holy trinity apps. So let's get into the video. Okay, so the first step of Google Calendar is create a calendar for like different parts of your life. I currently have calendars for academics, all the courses I take, and then I have one for Emily studying things and all things related to that. And then I have like personal, fitness, self-care, and you guys can have like a bunch of different things. And creating these allows you to separate every part of your life so you can keep it on task. Anyway, so you'll be first transported to here, and this is where my calendars are. So to create a new one, you go into add other calendars, and you want to create a new calendar. And you can also add emojis, which makes it look really cute. I should note that the emoji really adds nothing. Anyway, so once you created that calendar, it'll arrive right here. And 
you can see there's a bunch of different colors to choose from. But I personally don't like them because they just kind of like yell at you like... I like to create my own and I have a bunch of different hex codes right here. I'll show them to you. And these are the ones I have for my own calendar. So you can just like paste them in here or you can just like go along and like choose something. Okay, so next we're going to be discussing how to do recurring tasks. So these are tasks that occur on a routinely basis. So for me, this is basically like my morning routine, lunch, and then dinner, and then all my classes and like things that happen like on a routinely basis. So like, for example, it could be your clubs or like meetings that happen every week. Let's just click here, like any block, and then let's say your task is like a class put it into the different calendar you have so let's say it's a chemistry class okay so let's say this happens from like 5 to 6 a.m like every week and then you can repeat it like customly annually like all these different types or like every weekday so what i usually like doing is custom and then you click the day it happens so let's say it happens like two days a week and then you want it to end on like a certain date so this is when like the last class is and, and then it'll end after there or you can do it like on after a certain number of occurrences and if it happens like let's say every two weeks you could do that there's lots of things you can change within google calendar you just like play around with it and then it'll basically be there like every week so when i like scheduling my morning routine i just do it like this and then i just do it scheduled every day so next i'm going to be talking about how to be more efficient in google calendar so there are lots of like shortcuts and little tips that can actually improve your efficiency and you can get things done a lot faster if you just press the letter d you're going to get a day view if you press w you're going to get the week view and then if you press m you're going to get the monthly view of course i blurred things out because some things are a little too personal for youtube anyway next another hack if you ever just like oh no i have like a plan to do let me go open up my google calendar let me go find the date just press cal dot new it'll create a new calendar event and you just choose the date wherever you want and then choose like your calendar whichever so for example if it's like you just put it in it's super quick next is google keep google keep is like this little thing on the corner of here if you don't have it just like bring it out with showing the side panel and then it'll have this little boop. create a note and like let's say this is your to-do list you can actually plan your entire life inside google calendar except I can't get away from the physical sensation of checking off a task and like writing it down by hand. So what I like to do is have my schedule of what I'm going to do by time and then I'll write down the individual tasks. But basically what you could do is Tuesday to do list. To get these like checklists, you're going to need to like first open it and keep checkboxes and then for you, you'll show checkboxes and you can also like choose the colors if you want. Do this like in advance before. Add your list items, so for example, like, and then all of that and if you're done and then you can make another note for like Wednesday. Well, you could also put just like regular to-do lists, for example, just like general ones. Really plan out your entire life. And then once you're done, like you could just like check everything off. I'm going to talk about like little hacks to improve your life and make Google Calendar just a lot easier to your personal needs. For example, the first one is adding a different time zone. Many people don't know this, but like you have one time zone here. I'm going to pause it there and then skip the time zone part, but I do want to share just some things on Google Keep. So um, we have this um, imaginary student. And this is their calendar here. So as she mentioned, she has her Google Keeps on the side panel. You can access it from there. Um, you can also go to the little um, boxes up here. And then it is one of the um, apps that you can find there. Uh, and this would open it up in, an, in a full window so you could see everything in view. Um, but for this student, for example, they have their nightly routine set up as uh, a checklist for um, to repeat every night at eight o'clock. So you could do this for other things. Um, they also have a Sunday to-do list. So every Sunday morning, they are going to do all of these things. Um, they're gonna check for their upcoming events. Do they need to buy a gift or confirm a babysitter um, for their child? Like um, these are just things to kind of look at and think about, but maybe it wouldn't be relevant every week. Um, they would then use their Sundays to check and clean out their pantry and fridge and then create, you know, their grocery list or double check their grocery list, go buy their groceries and then meal prep for the week. Um, and they could add anything else. Um, but this is a reminder and it's set 
right now for September 3rd at 8 a.m. It repeats weekly on Sunday. And um, if we wanted to add a new note, we could do it from here. Um, so say we, we want to do a morning routine. And then this could be, um, so the, she went a little fast. So to get the checkboxes, you'll click on the three little dots here and you would go show checkboxes. It would then create a list view. So your morning routine may be to um, let the dog out. And then you would want to, um, oh gosh, oh, why am I blanking? You would want to um, get ready for the day or maybe do your skincare, skincare routine in the morning. Um, you would, um, I, I, yeah, make your coffee, <laughs> anything, you can make this anything um, that you want to remember to make it a routine. You would then push this little remind me and then set your reminders here. So you could do it as a reminder for a one time or you can do a reoccurring. Um, I'm going to go up say, say pick date and time. This is going to give me the option here to repeat. Um, we'll do this daily. We'll do this at um, custom. And then I'll change this to 6, 6 a.m. And then we'll just have to change this date to tomorrow since 6 a.m. has passed, hit save. And I'll go ahead and change the color to purple. So now you have your new morning routine. It's set to repeat. And when you go to your calendar, um, unfortunately, uh, Gmail, removed the reminders feature that it used to have and now combined reminders and tasks. So it won't show blocking your calendar, but you'll see it on the side here when you open up your Keeps app um, button on the side. Um, and then as long as you have notifications set up, you'll get a pop-up on your calendar or your browser um, or your phone if you have the Google Keeps phone app um, to let you know like, hey, it's time for your morning routine. And then you would just check things off as you get them done. Um, so that's one really great way to utilize um, the notes feature. And I think I might have not mentioned you are able to create a grocery list on here. So say um, and share it with somebody else. So, so if I create a list here for groceries, I would show check boxes. Let's put um, you know, bread, milk, um, butter, pasta, lots of carbs, lots of good stuff, bring food. Um, you would then click on collaborator and you can add somebody here um, to share your calendar with. So this student will go ahead and share it with me. And then that person will get a notification to say, hey, you've been added to this. And then we can both add to it. We can both um, look at it. We can both check things off. And it's a great way to just kind of have a living sort of document for a checklist that you are working with somebody else on. You can add multiple people. I often use this with my student ambassadors for um, tasks that I need them to get done. And so then they can see it right away. They can check it off um, and add any, any notes or comments or anything like that. So that's another way to use the Google Keeps function. And we'll go back to the video here. Um, we'll skip the reminders. The search feature is really great too. Um, I won't play it here, but in your Google Calendar, you can search for um, your just one specific calendar and then it gives you your agenda for just that one specific calendar. Um, this, we'll, we'll start it back up here on Zoom links. Inside the Google Calendar. So usually when I have a class, I, I just go straight to my Google Calendar and then click on the link. And to do this, go here, and then you go into location and put the Zoom link. You click on it and it'll transport you there and you'll automatically log in. It's just super quick and easy. And like for obvious reasons, I removed all of my Zoom links from this. Another cool thing I like to do t with school. Um, so another quick note on that is you can also add um, locations and say if you are, if you're like many of us who have to sit in traffic and so sometimes you wanna see how long is that gonna take me or um, is there a different route I can take? And so you open up your GPS app um, every morning. Um, you can automatically put your location to where you're going on your Google Calendar as well. And then when you go to your Google Calendar app on your phone, you click on your location and it'll automatically then bring up 
um, you know, get directions to that location um, in your, uh, your GPS um, app. So you can use that location space to either put the link, if you have an online class, um, just put the link so you don't have to go searching for it or to put in the lo location of, um, of where you need to go, um, whether that be work or school. Is having background events. So for example, if you're in class and you have like professor hours, you can create a calendar for that. So, so we will create a new calendar and we're gonna call this like office hours or like, I don't know what you do in your free time, but you know, something that's just like in the background or like maybe your boss has like office hours to go to, I'm not exactly sure. And let's say it's like every week from like this time. And then we're gonna put it in this office hours thing. And the color is kind of nasty, you can change that. And then you can save that. But like, you don't want that on your calendar every day if you're not gonna get help all the time. So you can always click it off. And then let's say you're like, oh no, I need help in chemistry again. Just go here and you can put this for like all your classes. Okay, so now we're actually gonna talk about how to stay on task. So you can create different tasks for you to do, but it's useless if you're not gonna stick with it. So I'm gonna be giving you a bunch of tips within Google Calendar and just like time management tips that actually help me do all the tasks that I schedule. So the theme of this little section is like you schedule everything, you have like your whole week planned, but you don't actually do any of it and it just goes to waste. You just feel good about all the colors and all that stuff. No, we, that's it. That's not the point of booking all this. You're not watching this video just to make pretty colors and do nothing. So you actually have to do all your tasks for this to be effective. So first thing I like is adding a little leeway between tasks. For example, like here or between here, you know, things that never go according to plan. And you know Parkinson's law, which is work expands to fill the time, basically meaning if you give yourself four hours to do a task, you probably are going to take four hours. But if you give yourself something two hours, you're going to like do it in like two hours. And now, of course, this has limitations like if if you have like an essay and you put two hours, like if it takes like 10 hours, you're not going to get it done that quickly, but like within reason, you know, example here, post video, and then I'll give myself some time to get to my physiotherapy appointment. Next is tasks within tasks. This is like a fun one. Basically we'll do digital planner. So for example, first thing I'll work on is, and then click that. And that's the first thing I got to do. And then the second thing I'm going to do in the next hour is, is make listings and then we'll click there and that'll take like this much time so it's like you're gonna have your entire block but then within the block you have little tasks you need to do that is just like planning a game anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed that video and learned something useful and hopefully you guys can create a more organized google calendar anyway that's the end of the so um this student creates events um, within their blocks, but you could use, um, and let me go back here, you can actually use tasks. So say for example, um, on this, uh, let's go to next week. So on Sunday, um, Sunday's gonna be my cleaning day. So I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna block my time and maybe not not, not that long. But let's call, let's say three hours. I'll have three hours in me on this Sunday to just get some cleaning and organizing done. So I'm gonna block off this time to say cleaning. Um, clean, 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 <laughs> cleaning. And um, I'll go ahead and keep it on my, my personal calendar. Um, this, this student has categories of fitness, school schedule, school work assignments, work schedule. I could create a calendar for chores, but we'll just go ahead and keep it under their personal um, general kind of one. And so I'll hit save. And then for this, I'm gonna then create some tasks. So basically you'll click here, um, instead of doing event, you'll click task. And I'm gonna spend the first um, 30 minutes just cleaning out my closet and maybe starting some laundry. So that's at nine o'clock. And then I'm actually going to hit save and then say um, the next part of what I wanna do um, while my laundry is going is clean my bathroom. And then hit save. And then um, the next part of that will be to um, tidy up living room and maybe dust and vacuum. 
and then hit save. And so now I have these tasks that I know that I need to take care of. Um, and maybe after tidying up that, my laundry is going to be done or I'm, I need to switch out my laundry. So then I'll put in here, you know, um, laundry into dryer. So I don't forget because I know um, I can't be the only one who sometimes forgets to switch out their laundry and then ends up um, either having to do, redo a load or with um, smelly clothes. And then we'll do another task here and um, maybe take out recycling. and then hit save. So um, last thing maybe would be to fold laundry. So you could um, you could do it this way. And then the kind of satisfying thing about this is that um, you could see it here. You can see everything that you need to do. Or on this side here, this blue check box would be your tasks. Um, I could even create a new list for just chores and maybe I should have done this first, but if you don't do it first, you can always go back here, go back to your general and then move this over to chores. Um, it's pretty easy just by hitting those buttons and then it has your lists at the bottom. So you can move them over. Um, and then when you do that, you can go just to the list of chores. So you'll see all your chores here. And then as you get them done, you can check them off. And it kind of gives you that satisfaction of kind of checking something off your list. And then you'll see it on your calendar. It gets checked off and then all your cleaning is done for that Sunday morning. So that's a, another way to utilize the, the tasks. Um, you can also do it as a Google Keep if you know that you, you always do the same routine for your cleaning. Um, you can have a cleaning checklist and have that set up and then just put it into your um, reminders for when, when you want to do it. Um, so it's, it's, those are just two great features that I really like to use for both work and at home. So I know we only have about three minutes left. Are there any questions that I could answer right now for anyone, any general questions? And just know we're, we're here for you. Um, if you need one-on-one -on -one support, setting up your planner or expanding on your skill set a little bit more. Um, if you want to talk about like a specific, a specific um, situation that you're not sure how to manage, um, you can always meet with us one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we have myself and we have some peer ambassadors that are available to, um, to help students and, and anyone who needs some support on campus. And then the last slide here is just um, who we are. So if you're not familiar with student health services, we are on campus urgent care, basically. You can come see our nurses. We also have mental health counselors that you can meet with on a regular basis. And you can also get health education with me. Um, we'll have a series of events this semester. So you'll see us out and about on campus, um, or you can drop into um, room 912 in Aptos or A126 in Watsonville. And we're here, um, we're here to support you. So thank you so much. Um, there's two minutes left, so I'll hang on if anybody has any questions. Otherwise, uh, we will go ahead and send out the, um, the slideshow. And I did record this, so I'll also put the link to the recording. And, um, and if there's anything else, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.